I'm in Ray. This is Jack Burton and the Pork Chop Express, and I'm talking to whoever's listening. Morning to war camp to the Johnny Bay. This is the doctor. I am I. Tell me. Everything's perfectly all right now. We're fine. We're all fine here. Now, thank you. How are you? Oh, yes. Hello. Well, hello, stranger. <laughs> How are you doing, sir? Do you know what's normally a good idea? To put your headphones on before the show starts. See, I don't use headphones do whenever not? I do the show. No, so that gets the, no real skin off my nose. But yes, Our ears. it's indeed. Uh, it's been about, what, three or four weeks? The, the last, last night I was almost before Halloween because you guys were going to be doing the Ghostbusters dress up. That's the, right, the, yeah. The in, in Lisbon. Which uh, in yeah. this social media age that we live in is, what, like a million years ago? A million years ago, yeah. So yeah. much has changed in such a short time. We'll have to use carbon dating to find out the exact <laughs> date of when you were last on the show. It's so weird because um, I actually feel like tonight I'm the stand-in because Anthony, God bless him, has been follow- following... Has been filling in rather for me while I've been gone yes. and working nights and stuff. He's been filling in for following he the nerd. He's been filling in for following the nerd, yeah. <laughs> Not um, following for filling in the nerd. Um, which is something else. Our, our thoughts and prayers are with him tonight, of course, because he has unfortunately some bad news uh, with he his had family indeed, yeah. um, today, so he's not with us tonight. Uh, but hopefully, maybe, you know, he can put the radio on, he can be listening to us or whatever else. But whatever you're doing, Anthony, we're thinking about you tonight. And thank you very much for holding the fort in my absence. Absolutely. Um, but yeah, so I've been listening to your show. I have, of course, even in my absence. I have been listening in I've been mm-hmm. enjoying the show as we would you expect you to yeah um, and it's I have been enjoying the banter I'm glad to hear that Anthony's loving Titans oh yeah I'm loving Titans are you watching well. it are you watching I it I saw the first episode oh, you said the other night you seen the first episode yeah I did that's right yeah okay I uh, really really got into it yeah, yeah. like in a big bad way it, it really got me invested it is honestly right and here we go hashtag Marvel hater okay uh-huh, uh-huh. it is the best comic book TV show on TV it's the best one that I've seen in a very long time. It has everything because it's got a straight face, it has humour, it has great action, and it's got the costumes, the outfits, you know, the whole mythologies in there. Because you're only in the first episode. Yeah. It explodes. It just, it's like, <laughs> you know the way Arrow, the first season, was just, he was this guy with a bow and arrow who ran around fighting bad guys. Yeah. No, none of that messing about in Titans. <laughs> it's straight in. You've got like Doom Patrol, you've got the nuclear family. I've heard a lot of good things about Doom Patrol. Doom Patrol is so good. Brenton Fraser as uh, Metal as Metal Man. I Metal knew there was a reason a why, I, why I decided to start watching this show. So good, so good. And the episode with Doom Patrol comes in. I think it's the fourth episode. I think it's got a real horror movie vibe to it as well. Because oh, nice. one of the characters, there's something wrong with them. I'm not going to detail because you have to watch it. And I know oh, right. it, everybody can't watch it yet because it's streaming on the on the US site. Um, but it's it's so good. I'll tell you one thing, sticking with DC, one thing that my other half has gotten into in a big bad way lately is Gotham. Uh She's binging the nonsense out of it on Netflix at the moment. Yeah. And every time I walk into the room and she's sitting there with it on the TV, she's like, no, 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 get out, spoilers, spoilers, get out. Because I'm going to make you watch this with me the whole way through before uh, season five starts. Season five starts, I think, in January now, because I watched the first two seasons of it. Mm-hmm. And I, I loved it. But do you know the way you just sometimes you fall too far behind and then you just don't get back into it again? Yeah, that's happened to me a lot with yeah. a lot of shows. So I'm going to wait probably because I'm watching Arrow and Flash and Legends and Black Lightning and Titans. Do you know, I've just finished The Purge, uh, which you should watch, by the way. All right, never really thought I'd good. hear that. But the last two episodes, it just completely falls apart, unfortunately. Okay. But the first eight episodes, really, really good. So um, stop at eight then. Stop at eight. The, the set up a character, I'm not going into any details because I know again not everybody's watched it, but the set up this character in the first eight episodes who just kind of comes and goes and this character seems to be doing something that's really awesome and then the ninth episode explains why, I'm not going to say whether it's he or she, but it explains why the character's doing it and it's like, really? No, you've just completely, completely destroyed that character. Okay, vague yeah. enough, but okay. Yeah, so that was a bit of a letdown. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, Titans. So listen, we've got some big news t- this week. Uh, a lot of big stuff to talk about. Yes, which um, is why I simply demanded that we have you back for this week's episode. We did, because yeah, because we need the nerd god here. We need the supreme oh, sitting here, you know. But he was busy, so we got you in. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, no, okay. So listen, this week um, we'll talk about it a bit later on. But we lost an absolute, not not just a legend, probably the the father of nerddom. We did. Uh, the the wonderful, 
late great Stan Lee, Stan Lee, who was ninety five years old when he passed away, a massive bucket of wind. Just unreal. Yeah, uh, so much grief online over this, and it just was unbelievable. It's 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 almost crazy in its way that for a man being ninety five years of age that everyone is so shocked that he's gone because he was such a titan of the entertainment industry. Yeah, well, I think Kevin Feige, I think, the, that runs the Marvel um, movies and stuff, he said he never, th- he just didn't think he was ever going to die. Yeah, he and thought I think, it would outlive us all. Yeah, but did you not sort of... <laughs> I know it's awful to say this, but you know the way now you, you go on to Twitter, you go on to Facebook and you see a photograph and it's like, you know, we're sorry to tell you that such and such. Every time you see Stan Lee's picture coming up, it was always like, oh, no, please <gasps> oh, no, don't be him, dead. It's him, yeah. And then it's like, oh, no, he's not. He's signing something or he's doing something. He's done. But we'll talk, we'll talk a bit later about Stan Lee. Um, other big news as well, big Ghostbusters news. Yes, there was. Dan Aykroyd, now that Ghostbusters answer the call, is out of the way. Mm-hmm. Dan Aykroyd is back to peddling the same old rope. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He, Actually, you know what? Let's just talk about this now. Let's go straight okay. into Ghostbusters. So Shoot from the hip. He was on the, what is it, the big interview, isn't that what it's called? Dan, yeah, it was Dan Rathner. Dan, Dan Rather, Rather, who once, Family Guy once famously described Dan Rather as a man sounding like a tea kettle just about to boil. Okay. <laughs> Because of the constant whistling that he makes when he talks. But, yeah, so yeah. so Dan Aykroyd was talking to Dan Mather, and you know it's top banana yeah, you whenever see, it's it's Dan Mather. A wee bit insight into this. I had heard this before, because the show obviously was recorded in advance, and before it aired on Tuesday night, I had been hearing rumblings, because I tagged you on a, on a story. That's editing, right, yeah. Um, about this. And, of course, I had to write it as a rumour, because we didn't know. We didn't want to be putting the news out, and then it not happen. People going, oh, you guys are fake news, right? Um, but... So, yeah, so, so right, okay, so basically he was on the big interview. They got talking about the Blues Brothers, Coneheads, Ghostbusters, and he dropped the bombshell that... They're writing a new script for a, a, new a Ghostbusters script. 3. Yeah, with the original three cast members, which, of yeah. course, would be... Um, Ernie Hudson, Ernie Hudson uh, Peter Bill, Rankman, uh, Bill, well, Murray. Bill Murray. <laughs> yeah, Sorry, the two are synonymous <laughs> now at this point. <laughs> uh, and Dan and himself, of course, Dan old, himself. old Big Dano, yeah. Uh, now, interestingly, he said that Bill Murray, he thinks Bill Murray will come back, even though it has to be as a ghost. And this goes back how long ago that the, the rumour was that Vankman was going to be dead and might be a ghost the, in the movie? I think it's the 90s, at early least. 2000s. Yeah, because I was remember he was talking about the, ghost, the whole Ghostbusters go to hell idea. Yeah, no, that was definitely a 2005 story that broke. Yeah. Because he wanted, like, Harold Ramis uh, came out back in 2005 saying he wanted Ben Stiller for a Ghostbusters 3. Bill Murray was going to be a ghost in it. It wasn't even confirmed that Bill Murray would play Peter Venkman as a ghost. It would just be Bill, uh, Bill Murray as a ghost. And some such nonsense. And perhaps Oscar Venkman as a Ghostbuster as a Ghostbuster. or something. Yeah, so we've been hearing all this stuff for years. Um I think uh, what happened was they took a lot of the ideas for Ghostbusters Hellbent, rammed all that together and made it the script for Ghostbusters the video game. So I have no idea what script that they're going to be working on, what ideas that they have for a potential Ghostbusters 3. Should this be the case? And of course you have to remember, it's all just speculative. Yeah. Because unless Sony or Columbia or some movie studio announces it, it's all still in Dan Aykroyd's mind. Yeah. but And Dan Aykroyd's got... One heck of a mind on him. <laughs> he does. But having said that, because I know we've been here before, as you're saying, you know, every couple of years, Dan Aykroyd comes out. He's like, oh, Ghostbusters 3. Vang Buy my vodka. Goes, CGI, <laughs> Harold Ramis. Yeah, Skull. What do you call it? Crystal, crystal Head, crystal head vodka. vodka. Vodka, whatever Kingdom of the Crystal Head Vodka. Yeah. Um, so every couple of years, he comes out. Now this, but I, the reason I feel this is different this time is because Sony are probably riding on a high right now because of Venom, yeah. which is doing spectacularly well for them. And we talked about this a few weeks ago. Uh, almost guarantees that Spider Man's going to be coming back to Sony, and we're going to be getting a big Spider Universe with Sony. They're probably riding that high. They're got to be looking at Ghostbusters and thinking this is a franchise we need to tap into. Yeah. We know that there's a, an animated series being worked on. We know there's an animated, like a CGI animation movie being worked on. Is there still though? Yeah, the last I heard, it's still happening. When's the last time you heard that though? Uh, probably about a year ago. At this well, stage. yes, exactly. And surely by now, two years after answer the call, we should have gotten a teaser trailer Something. at least. Um, but the last we heard, well, okay, so the last we heard though that was that the worst of the working on things. The, we know that we're not going to be getting Paul Feig is his Ghostbusters back. No. Um, so the only option has to be because you remember a few years ago we had the rumor that uh, Chris Pratt and um, Channing Tatum, Channing Tatum, yeah, were, which brilliant, yeah, Frank, no great I idea, watch yeah, the hell out of that. Um, so that was a big idea a couple of years ago. 
but I, I honestly think there could be something to this. I think Sony's bound to be looking at the original Ghostbusters. They're bound to be knowing, look, the fans are going to come back to watch, you know, the original gang coming back. But on the other side of that coin, what is the the issue with the rights at the moment with Ghostbusters? Because we'd known for a while that um, I think Bill Murray had a share in them. Like, obviously, the estate of Harold Ramis have a share in them. Uh, Dan Aykroyd would have a share in them. And Ivan Reitman would have a share. Yeah. But then after the whole shebang with the 2016 movie, how does that work now? And when do the rights revert back to Dan Aykroyd? I don't know. Because I'm getting a sort of Terminator 6 vibe from this. Oh, you think Dan Aykroyd... This whole like, Ghost Corps thing. Maybe they now? know that they're getting the rights back soon or the rights return to the, the original owners right. at some point soon and maybe that's why he's getting the wagon moving. Because we, we'd heard nothing about Ghostbusters yeah. since the 2016 movie came out. Because when, before the 2016 movie came out, it was all like, we have these big plans, we're going to be doing this, we're going to be doing that. Yeah, it's the 30th you anniversary know, coming up and we're going to try and make something. And then... The movie, the Ghostbusters movie, came out. Obviously, we all know the story there, and didn't do so well, and that 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 kind of killed it, didn't it? It did, yeah. But I'm thinking that was Sony's sort of last chance hurrah with Ghostbusters, right? And if that didn't take off, obviously, you know the story. Whenever it comes to licensing issues with um, movies and stuff these days, but for me, looking at it, it's kind of like. Okay, the only reason that Ghostbusters... Like, Ghostbusters answered the call, to me, felt very fast-tracked. It felt like Sony sort of going, right, we need to do something with this or we lose the rights. Yeah. It kind of felt like Amazing Spider-Man all over again, where it was like, yeah, it's it's only been X amount of years since this happened, but we're going to reboot it. So, for example, with Ghostbusters, it's only been X amount of years since the video game came out, mm-hmm. and that sparked a renewed interest in the Ghostbusters franchise. We need to do something with this. And they pushed and pushed and pushed to try and get Ghostbusters 3 made. And whenever that fell through, they immediately rebooted it. So that, to me, spells we need to do something to yeah, hold on to this franchise. Yeah, yeah. So the fact that we've heard nothing from Sony regarding Ghostbusters in the last two years, to me, spells we're, we're out of ideas. Yeah, I don't know. You could be right. I was kind of being, I was sort of being Mr. The Glass is Half Full on that one, but you obviously have, have undercut me in that. But I can see where you're coming from as well. Are you kidding me? I'm Captain Negative on this show. My thought my thought was that maybe after Ghostbusters answer the call, tanked, you know, Dan Aykroyd is, is, is taking control and saying, look, we need to go back to the drawing board here and, and give the fans what they want. I mean, obviously at this stage in their lives, I mean, Dan, you know, he's no spring chicken. So if we do get Ghostbusters 3 with, with those characters back, it's going to have to be a pass into the Torch movie anyway. Well, it's going to have to be what answer the call should have been yeah it, well it's exactly the script that Dan Aykroyd's had in mind with uh, the two writers from the office I think it was uh, Lee Stupinski or James yeah, Stupinski or something like that because they wrote that 2000 BC or whatever it was called or oh yeah yeah, yeah. That, just, that one that um, was an absolute Harold Ramis directed yeah, wasn't it yeah uh, with Jack Black and, and inter- Jack interchangeable Black? teen awkward guy number six <laughs> uh, who looks like Lex Luthor him. Y- yeah but it wasn't him it yeah. was the other guy I can't remember his name. Scott Pilgrim. Yeah, so anyway. Um, what was I saying? I don't know. We're talking about Ghostbusters. How That's right, yeah. yeah. So the original idea that Dan Aykroyd had was the passing of the Torch movie. Yeah. And he talked about like the different characters that he had in mind, and some were female, some were guys, yeah. and they were going to get the packs, get the equipment, and it was going to be extreme Ghostbusters, where they get the original packs, the original equipment, the original Act of One, they go out to try and fight some ghosts, and none like. The technology just doesn't work anymore. Yes. Yeah, so they, so they up build, like uh, they upgrade the packs. Like the IDW and rebuild comics stuff. have done, you know, where they yeah, keep absolutely. introducing new technology and like they've got like the sort of the shorter cyclotron packs and like yeah. the, the rest mounted guns yeah. and, and different bits and pieces like that. Yeah, which would be fantastic. And do you know what? Something else that kind of sprung from that interview with Dan Rather, he said, whenever he was talking about it, and I'm paraphrasing heavily here, he said something along the lines of. The the people that we have to direct this, or the team that we have to direct this. Right now, I have to be on full disclosure. I haven't heard the interview, so okay, I, you're telling me. I heard the interview um, on YouTube. I think it was yesterday afternoon. It was uploaded, right? And it was a very bad sort of cam copy, but I got the gist of it. He said the team that we're 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 working with now, the directors right. that we're working with now. Okay. To me, that screams Phil Lord and Chris Miller. Well, they were they were attached to it about. Before Ghostbusters Answer the Call, so about three years ago. Yeah. Um, and to me, they're a perfect choice. Yeah. You know, no, absolutely. Like, they haven't choice. put a foot wrong yet. Yeah. 
I mean, obviously there's the whole solo fiasco.